I'm speaking to Paranjoy Guha Takuta, who is an expert on the Adani group in India and who is a writer, uh, an author, an editor, a filmmaker um, and a public intellectual. So I just want to uh, ask you, Paranjoy, uh, about this book that you've put together on the Adani group. Um, can you tell me a little bit about it? Jeff, first, I mean, thank you. You've been, you flattered me about all that I'm supposed to be doing or not. I do not consider myself to be an expert on the group. I'm just trying to understand how incredibly fast this corporate conglomerate has expanded and spread its, its footprint and its fingerprints all across different segments of the Indian economy and in different parts of the world. So me and a group of us, uh, uh, that includes Abir Das Gupta, Nihar Gokhale, Ruchira Talukdar, uh, among others, uh, Nilina of Caravan, we're trying to put together a book that examines this incredible rise. Me and my colleagues, we've been working on this for over four years. Hopefully, before 2020 is over, this book will come out. It seeks to examine how a college dropout, who very few people knew 15 years ago or 20 years ago, has become what Forbes magazine would describe him as the second richest man in India, a person whose proximity to Prime Minister Narendra Modi is hardly a secret. And, and we try and examine how he's become as big as he is from being a trader of plastics or being a, a business person in cut and polish uh, diamonds and gold jewelry, how he's become the biggest generator of electricity in the private sector in India, the biggest distributor of electricity, both coal-based also solar energy, how he's not just the biggest importer of coal to India, but he's also the biggest coal mine operator, how he operates India's biggest port in the private sector, India's biggest special economic zone, how he's controlling uh, a, a sort of string of jewels across the West Coast and the East Coast, how he's emerged as the biggest importer of edible oils, uh, a, big, a huge importer of apples, a major player in real estate projects in different parts of the country, and I haven't concluded. There's still more that. The biggest, the group is the biggest uh, provider of gas in cities, the city gas distribution system. He's emerged as a major player that is modernizing uh, airports in different parts of India. He uh, intends becoming a major player in data storage, digital data storage, also looking at uh, defense equipment, including drones, also called U, U, uh, unmanned aerial vehicles with, with an Israeli company, and, and well, a whole lot of projects across the world, including in Australia. So what we're trying to do is document his incredible rise, and, and looking at all the controversies, all the lawsuits, all the legal cases, all, all the different kinds of investigations that have taken place, the unusual circumstances under which he was kidnapped and then released. So we, we try and look at the story of Adani from different angles. Uh, the story of Adani as uh, a person who has expanded at an amazing pace in the recent past. Well, as you say, the uh, meteoric rise of the Adani group has been dogged by accusations of crony capitalism, environmental destruction, um, breaking of some of the rules and so on. Um, w w what do you think of uh, the way in which uh, that group finds itself in the courts but um, seems always to be uh, uh, let off the hook at the last minute? Look, there are large number of legal disputes that are pending at different stages at different courts of law and tribunals and uh, appellate authorities concerning different companies in the Adani group. The group, the group itself is huge. Um, I, I, I'm certainly I'm aware of at least 200 odd corporate entities which are all part of the group and they have very amazing uh, sort of complicated convoluted um, patterns of ownership through cross-holdings, etc., uh, which are all over the world. 
his extended family has business has a business presence in different parts of the world in in West Asia in Hong Kong he he's he buys a lot of goods from the People's Republic of China besides of course he has major business interests in your country that's Australia and he's also has major business interests in Indonesia and and Malaysia so uh, we're trying to document the amazing growth of this man uh, and the corporate empire he heads and 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 yeah and we also examine the cases we also examine the nature of the allegations made by different kinds of people including uh, government authorities including uh, bodies like the directorate of revenue intelligence and and we look at why these cases have moved in the way they have what about uh, the environmental record of the adani group I've read about uh, accusations of destruction of mangroves, blocking of creeks associated with the uh, port developments, um, areas of wetland that are under threat from other expansions and so on. Uh, and of course, the, uh, the destruction of forests in the Hasdeo Arand area of the Gond people. Oh, uh, is that an issue that, that uh, is, is explored by you and your colleagues? It will be in the book. Uh, it's already been explored in various uh, by various media organizations, by various journalists and writers and activists. Uh, the point is, the same story gets repeated, whether it deals with accusation of invoicing, manipulation, or the way in which the pricing has the pricing of electricity has happened. All the controversies relating to environmental issues, whether these be at Mundra the biggest private port in India, the whole issue of the mangrove uh, swamps over there, uh, whether it be in Goda in Jharkhand, whether it be in Chhattisgarh in the Hasdewaran forests, the same story somehow gets repeated. Yes, there are accusations, there are debates, there are discussions, there are civil society protests. Somehow or the other, all those clearances come through. So we, we're trying to document how this has happened, how the legal system works, how environmental laws are implemented or not implemented, and, and look at the loopholes in the law, look at how um, the, the whole system of giving Environ uh, approvals, environmental approvals, approvals for clearance of forests, how these systems work or do not work. That's really a fair part, uh, a fairly large, a substantial part of the book that uh, we are working on at present. And, and these um, controversies also get combined by analysts uh, with analysis of the group's um, financial structure. Um, whereby you have parts uh, of the Adani group lending to other parts or borrowing from them or buying shares in each other, etc. Um, and uh, given its rapid expansion and given uh, this sort of convoluted structure, um, is the group fragile or has it reached the point where it's now too big to fail and will be bailed out by government no matter what? Look, uh, Mr. Adani is not just close to the Prime Minister. We've had banks and financial institutions supporting him. Uh, he's not the first person or, or, or the, the first corporate group to be what financial analysts would describe as highly leveraged. Time alone will tell whether uh, his borrowings have uh, reached a stage where his ability to repay would get jeopardized. It's early days, but yes, of course. We've had a fair amount of information which shows that he his, his borrowings are very heavy, but he continues to borrow and banks and financial institutions continue to support him. Now, whether you would like to describe this as being financially fragile, we'll have to wait and watch. And, and whether he's too big to fail and whether the government will bail him out should such a situation arise, again, uh, it's difficult to speculate at this juncture. But there's, there has been analysis, including by the Credit Suisse Group, which have actually showed, uh, talked about the borrowings. You know, there have been certain corporate groups in India which are in a very, very bad shape. They're uh, bankrupt uh, because it's been unable to repay its debts to banks and financial institutions. I wouldn't put the Adani Group in that category.
at this juncture. For all you know, we'll have to wait and watch what happens. You describe, uh, you use the word crony capitalism. Yeah, maybe you can uh, talk about many of the, the, the subjects and the issues that we have, we've talked about as instances of the working of crony capitalism in India. Perhaps a more appropriate word would be oligarchy. I mean, how is it that particular industrial groups seem to be doing way, way better than others? Is it on account of their entrepreneurial acumen, their, their ability to sort of do things better and faster and more efficiently than the competition? Or is it that the rise of these, the spectacular rise of these corporate conglomerates have a lot to do with their <coughs> ability to game the system, favorably, favorable regulatory regimes with which facilitate their growth? Well, as you say, we'll just have to wait and see what, what happens. Um, but in the meantime, thanks very much. Thank you so much, Jeff, for speaking with me.